Alright, today's video is going to be a little bit different. For starters, we are at my desk, which is really where all of my projects do begin, which is InDesign. Now, I use SketchUp. It's totally free software. You can download it off the web. I use the web-based version because it means that I can store my files on the web, and if I'm working on a different computer, I can pick up the file and keep designing with it. I don't have to carry around my hard drive or a USB stick. So I thought today I would run you through the design process that I go through. I'm going to use the letters as an example. If you want to see how I made the letters, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check out that video. But I say let's jump into SketchUp. I'm going to give you the basics or the 101 that you need to know. If you want to continue your education on SketchUp, YouTube has a ton of videos on it and that is the best place for you to have a look. I am no expert in SketchUp. Everything I have learnt, I've learnt off YouTube. There are a thousand and one ways to do what we're going to do today, but I'm just going to show you what works for me. So I say let's jump in and let's get designing. Alright, to give you an overview of SketchUp, so on the left hand side down here you have all of your drawing tools, the things you're going to use first off, and then down the right hand side you've got all of, I like to call your finishing tools if you're applying a paint or you want to do a different scene or anything like that, it's on the right hand side, but we're mostly going to be on the left today. So I've already done these, but I'm going to show you how we do the T, because I think it's the middle of the road. The J was probably the hardest and L being the easiest. So let's give ourselves some clear working space here. Now the first thing I like to do whenever I start a project is give myself a constraint box so that I don't end up drawing something that's completely out of proportion and when I get into the workshop it's way larger than it needs to be. I'm building a bench for a giant. So a couple of things to start off with are shortcut keys. I use the keyboard for the shortcuts, so I just think it's easier. So H gives you the hand tool and that means you can move your model around uh, and on your little mouse the little middle roller ball is your orbit. Now all these tools are available on the left hand side but I just find these are easier. So I'm going to come over here to my box tool and I'm going to draw the box which is my constraint box to start with. Now you can just draw a box any size and you'll see down here in the right hand corner they are my dimensions. So I'm working with millimeters today, but if you want to change it to inches, by all means you can do that. So I'm going to type in, I want my model to be 400 mil in width, and the timber I'm going to be working with is 89 mil in width. So once I've got my box here, now you can keep pushing in numbers until you click off it and it'll keep moving. So I'm going to push P on my keyboard, which is the push-pull tool, and I'm going to push it up and click anywhere, and I'm going to type in 500 mil because that's how high I want my letters to be. Spacebar to come back to the pointer. And then I want to click on these faces and delete them because I actually don't need all of these. I just want the bottom and then the outline of the box. So I can delete all those. Now I want to triple click on the box and hit G for component and then enter. So component just makes sure that those, the tool or the, the shape that you have drawn is unique and not going to attach to another, um, another shape. So once we've got all of those, I can now think I'll start to put in some guidelines for my letter. So I'm going to come over here to the measurement section and click on my little tape measure and I want to come down from the top 150 mil. So again you can always just click anywhere and then type in what you want the measurement to be and I'm going to put in a middle, I may not use it but I'm just going to put in a middle just in case. Now I think what we'll do is we'll start with the sides of the T because I think that's going to be the easiest. So if you ever want to come back to the pointer, I after any task always hit spacebar and come back to my pointer. I'm going to come over here to the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw another box. So I want my box to be 150 mil in um, length and then comma and my the thickness of my timber is 19 mil. And then I can push my push pull tool and push it back 89 which is the width. Now before I turn this into a component I want to turn I want to take 45 degrees off the sides. You can just use butt joints for these, but I want to challenge myself, so I'm going to use 45. So I'm going to come back over to my measurement section and click on my protractor. I want to be on the green plane here, and then I want to click once on the corner that I want to uh, get my angle from, and then another click to get the line happening. Now, SketchUp is smart enough to snap to certain degrees like 30, 45, or 60 degrees. So if it doesn't snap to it, like at the moment it's sitting at 32, I can click and I can type in 45. Now while I've got the tool out, I'm going to do the same on the left hand side. And it should snap if it's smart enough. No. And then I'm going to push L on my keyboard for the line tool and I'm going to draw a line across those guidelines that I've just put in. Now I'll know this has worked is when I have my push-pull tool, which is P on the keyboard, it's highlighting just that section because that's basically become an individual shape. So I'm going to push and pull those back because that's not what I need. 
and then I can delete these guidelines and I can triple click and now turn this into a component. Now I want to move it so I'm going to push M on my keyboard for move and you'll get these little red crosses come up which you can click on one and then use it to rotate it around to 90 degrees I can see down on the right hand side so I know that it's even. Now the other advantage of using a constraint box is that you can click on the corner of your shape and it will snap to the corner, if I zoom in here you can see it, corner of the model which just makes it a lot, hell of a lot easier. Now I know that this other side of the T is exactly the same size so I'm going to Command C and Command V. Now I know it's facing the wrong way at the moment so we're going to right click and we're going to flip along the blue axis which then now turns it around the right way and I can snap it straight into the corner. Now the bottom of the T is also going to be 150mm so I'm going to Command C and Command V that same shape but I need to rotate this so I'm going to click on one of my points here and rotate it up and I always use the bottom right hand corner to know that I've got it exactly flat. Now as you move the cursor along it'll actually snap and highlight midpoint of the component so I'm going to click on that midpoint and now I've got that guideline in place I can snap it right down to the corner or to the midpoint of that guideline. So now I've got all of my 150mm pieces and now I can move on to the next bit. I think what we'll do now is we'll do the top part of the T. So I'm going to use, now you can also, you could always just draw another rectangle, take off the 45s just like we've done with the 150mm pieces. But I'm going to use the line tool. So I'm going to get my L on my keyboard and I'm going to draw a line to outline the shape that I want. Now I know the shape will be complete when the box fills in and goes a colour like it has here. Then I'm going to push P on my keyboard and push pull back and another great advantage of having the constraint box is I can click on that line and it will automatically snap to that depth so I know that it is 89mm. I'm going to triple click on it and turn it into a component which it is done. Now at the same time I think we're going to put in another guideline here just so I can start to do these sides. So I'm going to come back over here to my measurement section and I'm going to get my tape measure and I'm going to come down and I want to come down to this section or this corner here so that I, when I draw my lines up I know where I, how far I need to bring the piece up. So I'm going to click on there. Now I think we'll use the line tool again. So I'm going to push L on my keyboard here and I'm going to come in from this inside corner here and I'm going to come all the way up to the top. Now I know that I'm in a straight line because the colour of my line is blue because I'm running on the blue axis. If I move over it will turn black and then it will snap back to blue. I'm going to come and then I'm going to come across. Now I can see the length on the right hand side there is 19mm which is correct. Make another line and then I'm going to come down to this corner here and I know my box is complete when it colours in. I'm going to push pull on my keyboard and snap it back to this line back here and I can, before I turn it into a component, I want to take off the 45 degrees at the top. So I'm going to come back to my measurement section and get my protractor draw two clicks where I need it to be and it will snap to 45 then I can hit L on my keyboard to draw the line across the guideline and then I know that bit is right because it's now just got the top highlighted and I can push pull back that section. Now I can get rid of this guideline so I don't need it anymore and I can triple click and turn this into a component. Now I know this side is exactly the same as the other side so Command C, Command V and I just need to flip it so we'll go in here and flip it again across the blue axis and then I can click on this corner and snap it straight into this corner here. Now the last part of the T is this, these two top sections here. So again I'm just going to use the line tool, push L on my keyboard and draw the line and fill in the box. And then I can repeat the process and pushing and pull this back. Now if, you, if, you, if it's not working and you just want to push and pull you can always just type it in. Anywhere you can do that. As long as you haven't clicked off it, you'll still be able to type it in spacebar and then I can triple click G for a component and then we'll do the same on the other side. I could just copy and paste it but I'm going to use the line tool. Come up and follow my guidelines and then quite simply you have got your model and you are ready to start building. Now I find this really helpful because when I get into the workshop these particular cuts need to be precise and like 100% correct otherwise the T won't come together and you'll have gaps. So I found this really useful because I could refer back to the model and know exactly where I needed to cut and it also helps me make sure that I know which angle or which way the, the, the direction of the angle should be running. So just like that you've got all of your letters 
Now I'd say jump in and have a go. Like I said, it's totally free software. So I think download it and have a go and see if it's for you. If you have any questions or if you want, if I can help, let me hit me up in the comments below and I'll try my best to give you a hand. Otherwise, if you want to see how I built these, again, check out the link in the description below. Otherwise, happy building and I'll see you next week.